Welcome to the diocesan service at the Anglican Parish of the Parks. A reminder for those who are assisting in the service to please observe the COVID safe guidelines as printed in your bulletin. Creator, who is a community of love. We gather in the name of the Redeemer, who reconciles all of creation. We gather in the presence of the life giver, who inspires new life and renews it. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We belong to the Creator, in whose image we are all made. In God we are breathing, in God we are living, in God we share the life of all creation. We belong to Jesus Christ, the true icon of God and of humanity. In him God is breathing, in him God is living, through him we are reconciled. We belong to the Holy Spirit, who gives us new life and strengthens our faith. In the Spirit love is breathing, in the spirit, truth is living. The breath of God always moves us. We belong to the Holy Trinity, who is one in all and three in one. In God, we are all made. In Christ, we are all saved. In the spirit, we are all united.
as in this diocesan service, we pray the prayer for as we celebrate St. Francis, creation and Earth Day. O oh God, whose blessed Son became poor, so that we might through his poverty become rich, deliver us from an inordinate love of this world, so that inspired by the devotion of your servant Francis, we may serve you with singleness of heart and attain the riches of the age to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Touch the earth lightly, use the earth gently, nourish the life of the world in our care. Gift of great wonder, ours to surrender, trust for the children tomorrow will bear. We who endanger, who create hunger, agents of death for all creatures that live. We who would foster clouds of disaster, God of our planet, forestall and forgive. Let there be greening, birth from the burning, water that blesses and air that is sweet, health in God's garden, hope in God's children, regeneration that peace will complete. God of all living, God of all loving, God of the seedling, the snow and the sun. Teach us, deflect us. Christ, reconnect us, using us gently and making us one. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, beginning at the 24th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? 
Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. For the gospel of our Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't worry. The key message, the key invitation from this well known passage at the heart of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. No one can serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry. Yet today, as we celebrate St. Francis, as we celebrate creation, Earth Day, we know there is a lot to worry about. The reality of climate change is mostly accepted and its impact on the environment. And even if it's not, there are still realities of climate events, natural disasters to grapple with. And the fact that much of creation has been damaged by pollution. As David Attenborough put it on just last Monday's 7.30 report, humanity has taken by and large what it wants from the natural world and is heading for disaster. There is not a fair sharing of resources, whether we're talking between humans and other species or between the richer and poorer parts, peoples of the world. And this is all apart from the worry, the uncertainty brought about by the pandemic, which has only served to emphasize the disparities. Our commitment as people of faith to caring for the environment, the earth, and all that lives within it springs from a deep sense of creation as gift. And Jesus' invitation to not worry, do not worry, likewise springs from a deep sense of the earth, of creation as gift. The gift of God who is not distant from the world. The gift of our God who cares about beauty and life and food and clothes. The creator God who has filled the world with wonderful things, mysterious things, things full of beauty, energy and excitement. And God who wants us human beings above all to trust God our creator love God our creator 
and receive our own beauty, energy and excitement from God. Human beings may be distinct within creation, yet we are not separate from creation. We're interdependent. Look at the birds of the air, the flowers, the grass of the field, Jesus says. They are a sign of the gift of creation. They point to God the creator, God our creator, the creator of all who wants to feed and clothe us. Creation as gift, creation as comfort. When anxiety threatens to get the upper hand, whether that's about money, having enough, security, health, whatever, we can take comfort as Jesus did in the birds of the air, the lilies of the field. The birds gather their food. We look at flowers being beautiful. God cares just as much, if not more so, for human beings. Some people have rediscovered creation as comfort, I think, in amongst the anxieties and challenges of COVID-19. I, I know I have, watching over the past few months an orchid. It was a gift, actually, from Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity East Melbourne, in fact. And I have been able to watch over the last months how the original stem has slowly, the flowers have died, uh, but in the time of the pandemic, there's grown a new stem and slowly it's flowered. All the flowers have, have budded and come out. The last one just yesterday. And it's beautiful. Just one example of slowing down and enjoying, taking comfort from the beauties of creation not being able to go places, not racing around, as I normally do. For those of you who don't know me, I realise I've been remiss at the beginning of the service. My name is Bishop Geneve, and I'm one of the uh, assistant bishops in the Diocese of Melbourne. If do not worry is, at the, invitation, is the invitation at the heart of Jesus' Sermon of the Mount, on the Mount, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, is the challenge which lies at the heart of his sermon. If we trust that this life is not the only one, then we don't need to be obsessively trying to get whatever we can out of it, living greedily, irritably, fearfully, as if it's almost closing time. We live in a world filled with anxiety, a world filled with worry about not having enough. It's easy to let it rub off on us. Hear Jesus' words. Hear Jesus' challenge. God's kingdom and his righteousness. Seek it first. God's kingdom and the way of life that goes with it. That is, the righteousness or behaviour that marks us out as God's people, living according to his promises, his ways. Love God and your neighbour as yourself, to put it in another of Jesus' words. Let God's kingdom and his righteousness, seeking that hit first, stand at the heart of our lives as the people of God, as followers of Jesus. That is what will enable us to not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Jesus is not denying the realities of life. To recognise that today's trouble is enough for today in the words of verse 34, the final verse of this chapter. So creation as gift, creation as comfort, creation also as responsibility. 
As Pope Francis wrote in his encyclical leading up to the Paris Climate Conference five years ago, 2015, we are to hear the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. Questions of justice are part and parcel of debates on the environment, of issues in relation to the environment, the earth. The choices we make here, the choice, how we choose to live now, affects not only future generations, they affect the most vulnerable people on our planet now, as he writes. The poor, who are the majority of the planet's population, billions of people. So a truly ecological approach always becomes a social approach. It must integrate questions of justice so as to hear both the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. We must continue to be aware that regarding climate change, as he is writing, there are differentiated responsibilities. Greater attention must be given to the needs of the poor the weak and the vulnerable in a debate often dominated by more powerful interests. So to put it locally and in terms of climate change, the question for us is not just what good is good for Australia, but what is good for our neighbour. For example, islands in the Pacific and people who live there, people who see their islands, their homes, their land disappearing, submerging. St Francis his namesake, the Pope's namesake, whose feast we're celebrating today, understood creation as gift, creation as comfort, creation as responsibility. His behaviour and the ideals of the order he founded were consonant with that of the early church, as we, model, as we see modelled in our reading from Acts. Even if we don't go down the path of communal living, we can see the living out of what it means to see creation as gift as comfort, as responsibility. What is it we need? What is enough? What is it we need in relation to other people rather than just what we want? So what does it mean to live not as people of worry but as people of hope in the light of creation as gift, comfort and responsibility? I think we see it with many Christians, individual Christians and other people taking seriously the choices they make on a day-to-day -day basis in the face of the drive of consumerism. People attempting to live more sustainably, both as individuals and in community. I think people have particularly taken that seriously in the pandemic, the opportunity to be more local and what they can be doing at home. It's also encouraging when churches take seriously the resources we have, land and buildings. And I can think of a number of examples where churches have moved towards uh, better environmental policies with buildings, cars, things like that, uh, installation of solar panels, energy efficient lighting, all those things. Excess land that's been used for community gardens. Churches also grapple with issues around environmentally responsible investment. And with COVID-19, it's been inspiring to see how churches, how congregations, how parishes are not just looking out for their own survival, but committing to the care, to care for the vulnerable in our community whether that's continuing community meals, working out ways to do that, providing face masks, this deanery's been amazing with that, ringing up isolated people, distributing meals, distributing clothing, all sorts of different things people have been doing to connect with people who are vulnerable in our community. And all that is part of taking seriously and responding to Jesus' invitation, do not worry, and his challenge, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness as we enjoy creation as gift,
creation as comfort and we take seriously creation as responsibility. Let's affirm as ours the faith of the church. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. response to each petition when you hear creative spirit your response is enlighten our hearts and remain with your world creative spirit enlighten our hearts and remain with your world we pray in thanksgiving for mother earth in whom all life is rooted Brother Sun, whose energy radiates life. Sister Water, who nurtures and revives us. And co-creatures with whom we live and for whom we are called to till and keep this garden. Creative Spirit, enlighten our hearts and remain with your world. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. Creative spirit, enlighten, enlighten our hearts and, and remain with your world. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Creative spirit, enlighten our hearts and remain with your world. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature and part of the earth as we journey towards your infinite light. Creative spirit, enlighten, enlighten our hearts and remain with, with your, your world. world. In the wake of the COVID-19 global pandemic, hear our cries of compassion for the healing of our world and its creatures. Inspire our hearts with holy imagination to rise freed from the demands to produce and consume, to imagine a just and sustainable way of living where all have enough and all may be restored. Creative spirit, enlighten our hearts and remain with your world. During this season of creation, 
grant us courage to observe a Sabbath for our planet. Strengthen us with the faith to trust in your providence. Inspire us with the creativity to share what we have been given. Teach us to be satisfied with enough. And as we proclaim a jubilee for the earth, send your Holy Spirit to renew the face of the ground. Creative Spirit, enlighten, enlighten our, our hearts and remain, remain with, with your, your world. world. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love and peace. Creative Spirit, enlighten, enlighten our hearts and, and remain, remain with, with your, your world. world. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We praise you, God, for the earth that sustains life. Through the planetary cycles of days and seasons, renewal and growth, you open your hand to give all creatures our food in the proper time. In your wisdom, you gave a Sabbath for the land to rest. But these days, our living pushes the planet beyond its limits. Our demand for growth and an endless cycle of production and consumption are exhausting our world. The forests are leached. The topsoil erodes. The fields fail, the deserts advance, the seas acidify, the storms intensify. Humans and animals are forced to flee in search of security. We have not allowed the land to observe a Sabbath and the earth is struggling to renew. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord always be with you. Please take a moment to greet each other as you can in these COVID safe circumstances. <laughs>
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, faithful God, always and everywhere. For with your only begotten Son and life-giving Spirit, you are the one true God from everlasting to everlasting. At the dawn of time, you wrought from nothing a universe of beauty and splendor, bringing light from darkness and order from chaos. You formed us, male and female, in your image and endowed us with creative power. We turned away from you, but you did not abandon us. You called us by name and searched us out, making a covenant of mercy giving the law and teaching justice by the prophets. And so we praise you, joining with your faithful people of every time and place, singing the eternal song. was come, you sent your son to be born of Mary. Bright image of your glory, he learnt obedience to you in all things, even to death on a cross, breaking the power of evil, freeing us from sin and putting death to flight. You raised him from death, exalting him to glory and the new day dawned. On the night he was betrayed, your son, Jesus Christ, shared food with his friends, his companions on the way. When at table, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and giving it to them said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took a cup of wine and giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, living God, as we obey his command, we remember his life of obedience to you, his suffering and death, his resurrection and exaltation, and his promise to be with us forever. With this bread and this cup, we celebrate his saving death until he comes. Accept, we pray, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration, that all who eat and drink at this table, and those who partake spiritually, may be strengthened by Christ's body and blood to serve you in the world, as one body and one holy people, May we proclaim the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, eternal God, now and forever.
As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. For the people of God. As I receive this sacrament on behalf of us all, I invite you to take a moment of silence to prepare yourself and imagine you receiving the sacrament yourself here with me. For this blood, body, and blood of Christ are yours as they are mine. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. 
accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.